you can change the world. Learn from proven change makers from all walks of life. They'll show you how to raise money, invest for impact, and so much more. You can start small, start today, and never quit. You can change the world by strengthening your superpowers. Now, welcome to the Superpowers for Good show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. We are so excited today, folks. We've got with us Sarah Schley. She is an author and a filmmaker who uh, loves to talk about uh, bipolar disorder to help people correct their misunderstandings and misapprehensions. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Devin. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, we're thrilled to have you. Um, as uh, Tell us about your film that's coming up that you've been working on. Great. Well, thanks for asking. So we're working on a film called Brainstorm, which is uh, inspired by my, the book is uh, my life story of living with bipolar Roman numeral two. And it took me 25 years and five psychiatrists to finally get the diagnosis that saved my life, which is that indeed I have uh, a form of bipolarity. My kind of bipolar is not probably what you think of as typical. I mean, typically when I ask audiences, so when you think of bipolar, what comes to your mind, they'll say like big highs and big lows. And what they're really describing is what we would call bipolar one, which is at the extreme end of what we now know as the bipolar spectrum, big mania. But it turns out actually two out of three people who have bipolar do not actually experience extreme mania. And so like me, they go misdiagnosed, they're given the wrong drugs and they can get worse and worse. So that's a problem. So the film and the goal of the film and the book are uh, both to save lives, crush the stigma and maximize healing for people living with bipolar and their loved ones. Yeah, you had uh, General uh, Greg Martin uh, featured in the film, right? And he's been on the show a couple of times talking about his experience with bipolar. Uh, how did you two connect? Yeah, I love Greg. Uh, we share the same mission. He says, you know, he's a major general who has commanded 10,000 troops in Iraq, and he honors me by saluting and saying, Sarah, we have the same mission, crush the stigma, maximize healing, save lives. So actually, I met Greg through um, another character in our film who's named Devika Bouchon. And Devika uh, is an incredible human being who was the acting Surgeon General of California. And during that time, she came out with an op-ed in the LA Times that said, I'm the acting Surgeon General of California and I have bipolar disorder. And this kind of blew you know, the stigma out of the water and that was her goal. I read that article and was like, whoa, this woman could be my story if I was that much younger and was the Surgeon General. And I reached out to her and unbeknownst to me, Greg also reached out to her as did many, many other people. And Devika was kind enough to connect us um, all, uh, you know, to support the goal of the film. So both Devika and Greg and many other folks are characters in the film. What we're doing is we are combining stories of compelling, awesome people who live with bipolar with the cutting edge brain science and uh, breakthrough treatments. So that's what we're up to. Yeah, that is, it, it's such profoundly important work. I'm glad that you're doing it. Uh, can you tell us, help us frame and understand the problem. And I, I don't want to ask you to share anything that you haven't already shared in your book, for instance, but, but tell us a little bit about your life before your diagnosis and how uh, the, the challenges you faced because you weren't getting the proper treatment, mm -hmm. the proper uh, drugs, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So, and by the way, you can ask me anything you want, Devin, because I'm an open book at this point. It, it took me 40 years to feel safe coming out with my story because of the stigma, but now that I'm out, I'm all the way. So <laughs> ask me anything you want. Uh, so I, uh, I have a TED Talk and I describe it like this is that I was pretty much of a, a superstar kid until at age 21. I went to, you know, top university in the country. I was a varsity athlete. I had 4.0 in science. I was heading to um, one of the best medical schools in the fall of my senior year. I had a bunch of feisty friends. And then it was like as if there was a flip of a switch almost exactly on my 21st birthday in that all of a sudden my brain stopped working. And I felt like I was like a, you know, an airplane on a tailspin going from 50,000 feet rapidly down to earth about to crash. Uh, I 
I, I lost, you know, my cognitive function. I couldn't figure out where I was. I got too scared to leave my room. I was terrified to be with friends, even though it's typically very gregarious. And um, it was dramatically terrifying. Uh, so that was what happened when I had my first episode. And it, it was so different than how I had experienced myself up until then. I had no frame of reference for it. And yeah, so it was very scary. Um, over the years, then my 20s were were really rocky, up, down, up, down, up, down. And I had, you know, stretches of periods that were great and fine, followed by stretches of long depression, severe depressions that would go on for 9, 10, 11, 12 months. And when I say depression, I think a lot of people have depression with a small D. They feel sad um, or, you know, maybe, you know, they can't get out of bed, et cetera. In my case of the bipolar depression that I have, um, it's, it's severe to the extent that it's really a, cog, a brain breakdown. I call it like a brain breakdown. Your brain stops working. So there's tremendous cognitive dysfunction. I can go into a lot of examples of that if you're interested. Uh, but I try to explain that it's not just that you're sad emotionally. It's that your brain really isn't working. And uh, as a result of that, there's tremendous implications. Yeah, it, it, it sounds uh, scary. Have you... Tell us about how getting the right diagnosis begins, how that the treatment proceeds, how that changes and how it changes how you feel and operate. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's dramatic. And this is really a big reason for writing the, uh, the book and the film is that people with bipolar, with all kinds of forms of bipolar can actually live really full, rich and, and stable, steady lives if they get the right diagnosis, because there are treatments that are extremely effective. Now, the thing is with bipolar two and other types of bipolar down what we call the spectrum that aren't extreme mania. If you have the extreme mania, it's easy to diagnose. But if you don't, which is two thirds of people with bipolar, you're going to show up to your doctor and you're going to look depressed and they're therefore going to diagnose you with major depression and give you antidepressants. Uh, this, in many cases, in my case, for sure, will make you worse and worse. And the insidious thing is you look depressed, you go in, you know, with um, uh, low affect, no desire to live, perhaps suicidal ideation, no joy in life, et cetera, et cetera, classic depression symptoms. And, and therefore you're given the antidepressants, you come back because the antidepressants make you worse. You look worse with the same symptoms and they gave you more of the same drug. So you can see this is a vicious cycle that makes you worse and worse. When I finally got diagnosed correctly, the irony was after 25 years, it took this doctor, my fifth psychiatrist and several therapists and many clinicians in the interim, exactly 15 minutes to get it right. Why? Because he had an understanding of the complexity of bipolar. So he knew to ask the right questions. And he used a very simple bipolar spectrum diagnostic scale that was published in Dr. Jim Phelps's book called Why Am I Still Depressed? And with like five questions, he diagnosed me in 15 minutes. Therefore, I was termed wow. bipolar two. It's... Uh... Go ahead, Devin. No, I, I yeah, I, I, I apologize. I interrupted you, but it, 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 it's dramatic, isn't it? Tell us about how your life has changed. It's so dramatic, you can't even imagine the, the drama that there is. Because once I got the right medications, which I'm very fortunate they work for me, and it took about three months because you had to titrate up slowly with these drugs. Um, once I got to the right blood level, it was like that switch flipped back on. And suddenly I went from, you know, not being able to sort laundry, not being able to do dishes, not being able to figure out where my doctor was or how to find a phone number or how to get my kids dressed uh, or how to navigate through the streets of you know my hometown that I knew should know like the back of my hand. I went from all of that, switch flips, and I'm back. I'm back to a high functioning, capable um, person, you know, who's a mother, a wife, a professional, uh, a community member, all those things. And it's stunning how you know effective those treatments can be. So very powerful, changed my life dramatically over the course of the last. 15 years since that diagnosis, I guess, wait, 07? How old am I? 17 years now, <laughs> 07. I've been mostly well that whole time with the exception of about 18 months where I had a, a relapse due to menopause and the death of my mom. And that's a whole other story because it turns out that perimenopause, perimenopause is a dangerous time for women living bipolar. 
Um, but my doctors didn't know about that at the time. There's more known about it now. So anyway, point is I've been um, gratefully stable for many years with the right medication. I have to say also with a lot of the right personal behaviors, which is how I choose to um, take care of myself. That's informed by science around diet, exercise, uh, sleep, all that, all the good stuff that's good for everybody, but especially important for me and people like me. Yeah, for sure. For sure. As you look at uh, the research you've done over the years uh, about bipolar and living with it, one of the things that you mentioned that you turned up is that uh, many entrepreneurs, and of course, many in our audience are entrepreneurs, uh, have bipolar, or at least that bipolar pops up more common among entrepreneurs than other professions. Tell us about what you learned about that. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Like if I was in the room, raise your hand if you're out there as an entrepreneur with a, with a diagnosis. Uh, so over the course of the research for the film, we uh, were directed to Dr. Michael Freeman, who's out of UC Berkeley, and his um, clinical practice and in re and research is with entrepreneurs who live with bipolar. Uh, and he's determined, um, and it's you know randomized clinical trials, so credible that people with bipolar are significantly disproportionately represent amongst entrepreneurs and startups. And I got to say, I was one too. I saw that your this, film, this uh, program is about social good. And I had a sustainability company that consulted to major corporations around social justice and uh, environmental, you know, um, environmental um, health for many, many years, for three decades. So I understand that, um, that mission around social good. But yes, many uh, entrepreneurs live with bipolar, as it turns out. Yeah, it's uh, a fascinating uh, correlation that uh, is interesting, and I, I I suspect, but maybe I'm wrong, that it has something to do with the 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 mania side of things that tend to make uh, folks a little more self confident. I've often commented that entrepreneurs don't see a glass as half full; they see it as full. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it, it's that. That, that optimism is a defining characteristic of of entrepreneurs. Do you do you see that as being part of the uh, correlation there, or am I misreading the situation? No, I think so. I mean, there there's if you look at if you overlay the the map or the constellation of uh, personality characteristics of people with bipolar when they're well and entrepreneurs, it's sort of one to one. So we are visionary, we're risk takers, we're optimistic. We can, um, we're charismatic, so we can kind of, you know, get a crowd around us to do something that's our, that's connected to our vision. And all of those things that are, um, you know, signatures of people at Polar, of course, also work uh, for people who are, who are leading a startup. So yes, that's there. But I should also mention, it's not only, we're not only disproportionately represented amongst entrepreneurs, we're disproportionately represented amongst all the creative fields, writers, uh, artists. Uh, musicians, it goes on and on. You could list them. You know, you can look it up on Google. Uh, famous people bipolar, and you'll be surprised who you find. Oh, that's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. Uh, well, uh, folks, I, I'm here today with Sarah Schley. She is an author and filmmaker uh, who is living a very productive, exciting life with bipolar and working to advance uh, the cause of helping people better understand uh, bipolar disorder. And uh, we're so grateful to have her here today. We're going to take a, a short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk to Sarah about her superpower. So stick around. You don't want to miss this. You can get in on the ground floor to help fix the climate crisis for as little as $100. Pause now to scan the QR code to get started or visit s4g.biz slash raise green you can be a green at Ray's Green. Join us at Super Crowd Chicago with community focused business leaders and investors working to support diverse founders, social entrepreneurs, and community builders. Learn how to raise money from the crowd and invest like a pro on June 12th at Columbia College Chicago. Register now at thesupercrowd.com. Hope to raise money from the impact crowd. Good investors are as interested in community, social or environmental impact as you. 
connect with Funding Hope, an SEC-registered FINRA member crowdfunding portal to learn how to raise capital from the impact crowd. Scan the QR code now. Welcome back, everyone. We're here with Sarah Schley today. Sarah is a filmmaker and uh, author uh, who's talking about uh, changing the world's perception to end the stigma around bipolar disorder. She's a, a fantastic human being. We're going to shift gears now and talk to her about her, her superpower. Sarah, uh, you have accomplished amazing things. And I love that you've devoted your career to social impact and, and doing good and solving problems. And as you now apply that whole skill set to uh, uh, changing the stigma around uh, bipolar disorder, uh, it's got to be a satisfying, profoundly uh, gratifying work that you're doing. Certainly, uh, people like Greg Martin, uh, whom I know and appreciate and value, uh, must love the work that you're doing. What is your superpower? So interesting to think about that, Devin. If I before I knew about this research about entrepreneurship and bipolar, if you'd asked me that a couple of years ago, I probably would have said, I'm a visionary that gets people excited about what I want to do and they come with me, you know? And then I found out, well, this is a characteristic of people living with bipolar. So I would say that um, upbeat, I tend to just bless the heck out of people because it's genuine that I love them. And then, then we got a team that's excited about something. Uh, but I think I also want to mention though that from from the bipolar side of things, uh, from the difficult parts of this, which are excruciating, and you know, people with bipolar um, take their own lives at very brutally um, greater. You know, I'm trying to think of what the word is multiple multiple multiples of the normal populations, like 20 or 30. So it's a it's a painful, dangerous, and horrifying, um, challenging brain to live with. However, on the other side, there's some amazing things that you learn from that. And I think superpowers from this as well that I, I talk about, which are four things. Um, one is emotional fearlessness. It's that because of what darkness I've lived through, I there's nothing you can do that's going to scare me and I'm not running. I'm there with you. I'm right by your side. Um, another is this thing about discipline. And we haven't talked about this that much, but uh, in order to stay healthy, there's a lot of stuff I got to do. You know, I'm, I'm like very disciplined about my routine of, of you know, getting up, doing yoga, um, going for some kind of aerobic thing in the woods, you know, eating my smoothie, um, making sure I get my nap. And people say to me, how do you do that? Like, you're so disciplined. And I'll say, because you don't, if you had on the other side of health, what I've got, you do it too, because I know that's preventive, but the discipline is, makes you a healthier person. And it's also inspiring for people you love you, who love you. Like one of my friends says, you're my North Star on discipline. Um, so there's that. And and there's also this kind of c tremendous compassion that comes because, you know, there before the grace of God, I would be in the streets and I know it, but I hadn't been for my husband, my family, et cetera. And I'm not judging anybody that's got an addiction or that's homeless or that's incarcerated because I could be there. Um, and then the last thing is gratitude. Because, you know, every day that your brain is working, when you've had a brain that was completely gone and you've been in living hell and you live instead in heaven and your brain is working, there's this like tremendous gratitude. And I think that's also contagious. So I think all of those are superpowers. Yeah, they, they, they certainly are. As you think about the, I want to kind of just dig in maybe on, on one of these because our time is limited, but uh, I'm I'm fascinated by compassion, uh, and I think you know it's interesting. I read a really provocative uh, take from a psychologist this past year on empathy, and hmm. and she pointed out that empathy is harmful to the person who feels it genuinely, right? And that is if we really are feeling someone else's pain. Uh, that's painful. Uh, and if we do that too much, it damages our mental health. And I thought, wow, that, you know, we talk about empathy all the time. And she said that what we need is a deliberate compassion. And the difference is that when we feel empathy and make a plan to do something in response to be helpful, even if it's small, 
it completely shifts our brain and and the you know the the physical reactions the chemical reactions in our brain right and then in our body because we're now focusing on responding and doing good instead of just feeling pain and so I, it was a profound insight that the power of compassion so as i hear you talk about that becoming a superpower for you i want to just dig in how have you developed that how do you employ that how can you think of an example of a time when you used your compassion specifically uh, in a situation that you're glad you had that as an ability as a as a superpower great question Devin, I have to think for a moment uh, about that. I, I don't, for me, well, one thing that's interesting too in the distinction you made in the in the article that you read, one of my spiritual teachers, teacher's name, Rabbi Sheffa Gold, and she talks about the distinction between empathy and compassion being moving to the high heart. So empathy is kind of like you're stuck in it with somebody and compassion is you sort of lift up and you you are able to be present with them in a way that they feel safe and seen and loved and not alone but you're not sucked into that negative energy, like you said, that could take you down. Um, I, I think that, so my compassion that I've learned through living with bipolar is I think I'm very slow to judge people in a negative way. And so what that means in teams that I'm part of is that I tend to be able to see the perspectives of both sides if they're in a conflict. Um, and the one that's coming to mind, I can't really share because uh, I don't want anybody to identify these people. It's the one that's coming to mind right now. But a number of times in business uh, or, you know, when I was working with um, uh, for this audience might know the B Corp community. And I started a network of B Corp women CEOs and there was 300 of us. And then we have, uh, you know, a committee that's running that thing. And I was often and always the person that can help diffuse any conflict because I can I can empathize, have compassion for both sides and therefore look for a third way. And in that, that that's that meets and honors everybody's perspective. And in that everybody feels honored and and blessed and not judged. So there's room for everyone. All of you are welcome here. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I, th I think, you know, I never really, really reflected on it the way you're phrasing that question. Uh, I think that's helpful. Yeah, it certainly is. It certainly is. As we get close to wrapping up here, Sarah, I wonder if you would just take a minute and tell people uh, ab about how they can find your book, how they can find your movie when it comes out next year, how they can support you, how they can connect with you. Many people are going to want to, you know, be in touch uh, and be a part of your community. Tell them all of that, please. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Okay, well, this book is my baby. I love this book, and I really love the cover. Um, Brainstorm from Broken to Blessed on the Bipolar Spectrum. That's my memoir. And um, you can find it at Sarah Schley, like my name .com. You can find it at Amazon, uh, Brainstorm by Sarah Schley, and you can get it there as hardcover, softcover, audiobook, some people love instead. Um, the book, it's now been out for a while, and I have a lot of really poignant and beautiful uh, reviews on Amazon. So you can check those out and see what it's about. Uh, very deep, very moving. People say it's a super quick read. They read it in a day. Um, so there's the book. And then the film is inspired by the book and you can find us on brainstormthefilm.com, brainstormthefilm.com. And there you'll see um, a sneak peek. We've got a 10 minute preview. Uh, we have uh, my TED talk there. We have a list of all of our experts that we've scientists we've been talking um, with around the world. And so you can click on any of their sites. Uh, we got a whole bunch of other good stuff on there. So, and please just in either case, um, fill out the contact us. So you'll get on our mail list and then you'll learn more about what we're up to. We're going to start our own podcast in the fall um, with featuring myself and Dr. Jim Phelps. He's the guy who wrote that, uh, the diagnostic that I told you saved my life. And you'll be able to call in to ask Dr. Phelps questions. And that will be brain talk. Uh, uh, the Bipolar Spectrum podcast. So lots of ways, but you'll find out about that by getting on our mail list for brainstormthefilm.com. Oh, fantastic. Well, we are so grateful for the great work that you're doing. This is so incredibly important, makes such a big difference in the lives of real people, so many people. We want to wish you every success in, in the great work that you continue to do. 
Thank you, Devin. It's been such a pleasure to meet you and be on your show and wishing you all the best as well. And to everybody out right. there. <laughs> Thank you. Now, let's do some good. <laughs>